Alley of Light, Puerto Rico, 10 ball open, presented by Predator. Tonight's match, we have Mika Eminem and Vitaly Patsura coming in at very close Fargo rate. Mika with this small advantage there, about 10 points. Vitaly's had some very good results on the Predator Pro Series thus far, finishing in the quarterfinals at the Las Vegas Open and third place in the Wisconsin Open. I'm here with George Teachea. It's a pleasure to be with you guys. Hello, Eric. Hello, everybody out there. Estamos en Puerto Rico, San Juan. Ten ball, races to four. Mika breaking first. Won the lag. Made the four right on the one. Just a reminder in the regular Pro Series events, early 10 balls count, so he'll be looking at playing a 7 10 combo later in the rack. They just don't count on the break. Mario, he saw to that. He made a couple on the break. Oh, yeah, I think it was in Michigan where he, uh, he, uh, he went through the finals in about 15 minutes. Oh, when they were counting them yeah, still? Yeah, that's okay. when they were counting them. And so after that, they said, no more tens on the break. It's sh the format's short enough. Yeah. And it's just a little bit too, too valuable a commodity to allow. He's going to call the eight here, but probably looking at making both balls. <coughs> if he does make both, he'll be right on the three. He'll do as well. Enough room to pocket the five past the seven ten. Cue ball's tracking a little too far to the right here, but he can counteract that with some left spin, or he can choose to go around the five. Came dangerously close to the seven ball. Yeah, just felt like there was too much angle going to the right. Didn't feel like he could check it enough with the left, so I had to take a little more treacherous path there, but negotiated it well. Mika's been on a bit of a resurgence as, late, uh, as of late. He's had some strong results. And he's had some good results in this format, too. He was uh, 17th here last year, uh, a third in the Las Vegas Open in 2022. And, uh, you know, being player of the decade, 2000 2010, he's coming back into that form. Oh yeah, he's always a threat. He's, always, he's never really dropped off that heavily, but getting near the end of any event now is super tough, and he's proven to make his way through to the end pretty consistently. Look how nice of an angle he gave himself on this shot. Yeah, he, he wanted to be on this side of the seven. A little more risk of getting behind the nine, but much better attack angle to combo the ten here. With me, with uh, Fargo, Mika does come in in the top 100, and Vitali is just just out of it at 774, right at about um, 780 ish, is where it cuts off for the top 100. So many top players all around the world now. Well, just in the last, uh, and I think we've talked about this before, Eric. Just in the last year, year and a half. The resurgence of all the Filipino players that came out. I mean, there used to be about 30, 32 uh, players with an 800 or higher Fargo, and now there's 44 of them. Wow. And most of them Filipino. I gave the, those numbers out uh, in, in, uh, in Austria, and uh, there's just so many good players. Before it was maybe five that were probably going to win a tournament. Now there's probably eight guys, and it's just a coin flip. Oh, minimum eight. I yeah. you got to push it up to almost around 20. <laughs> Still t 10 of those that are finishing more often near the end, but the list of strong players is getting longer. No doubt about that. Well, Mika off to a good start here. Started off with a break and run. See if he can put a two-pack together here. He got quite a bit out of that rack breaking from the same spot, too. 
Yeah, made two balls. Yeah. Good spread. Rack didn't yeah. open up very well there. Didn't sound like he hit it very well, though. Yeah, it kind of took a little bit off. Went, went for yeah. more of a contact point break. They are playing with a shot clock. Players are. 30 second shot clock, they get 60 seconds after the break. There's a three foul rule. All ball fouls. And as Eric mentioned earlier, early tens are actually encouraged and allowed, except on the break. Yeah, the combos on the on the money ball are gonna come up more in ten ball than nine ball. The racks are generally more jammed up and you're gonna be in spots where it's more of an advantage to take it early. Tough to no. judge those shots where the cue ball so close to the object ball. Vitali is a Feder Gorse's road dog, and uh, not something you see him do very often. In fact, just behind the medalla there on the billboard is Feder, Christina, and I think it's uh, Gulikova. Yeah, a new player. Actually comments yeah. in one of her matches. Looks like a promising player. 19 years old only. Yes, she was playing uh, Margaret. Less yeah, less she was actually up 3 nothing yeah. in the first set. Margaret came back and won 4-3. Mika's got Vitaly in a pretty bad spot here. He can definitely hit it, but kick safes are going to be tough. This is a first-round winner's match. Vitaly defeated Al-Zadam. Mohammed from Libya in his first match. Uh, and Mika from Finland defeated Miguel Rodriguez from the USA. Quite an international affair we have this week here in Puerto Rico with the World Team Championships being held starting on, is it Thursday or Wednesday they start? Starting tomorrow, starting actually. Tomorrow, yeah, yeah, it's going to be an exciting event. It's a it's a great format where you have two women and one man, and uh, they mix them all up. And this format just suits that type of uh, team very well, I think. It just matches up to just really intensify the pressure and every shot. Yeah, well, it's big pressure playing for your country and, and big pressure playing on a team and coupled with the shorter races. Really exciting stuff coming up this week. We also have the women's 10 ball. Medaille Light women's 10 ball. I feel like Vitelli might have been trying to run into the five there. Didn't quite get into it. Gonna be looking to play the cue ball behind the 10. Small risk of the two coming off the rail and hitting the 10, but it should be okay. Could play the cue ball behind the seven as well. Good shot. Left enough room for a jump, and Mika's going directly to the jump queue here. Called the bank. Doesn't quite have enough of the left side of the two. Even if he did, the position lies better if he plays a bank on the two here. What's slows down he's gonna leave it he did first good chance for Petsura six is in a tough spot gonna have to get a good angle on the five to play the six over into the short pocket could consider opening up the long pocket for the six by playing the three off the eight a little risky but has to consider that because playing the six in the shorter pocket is tough. Looks like he is going to stick with that plan, though. Might be able to just nudge it enough off the rail that he'll be able to play it in the side. If the cue ball plays into the six, He'll definitely try to do that. I feel like it is tracking a little bit past it where it won't hit it. Mm. 
Still has good angle to come up above the six. Believe the seven passes the ten into the bottom right corner pocket. You know, I see Vitali wearing a predator patch, and uh, Q looks looks like a predator. Uh, I just checked the pro team, and he's not on there, which surprised me. So he must they must have just now recently added him. Yeah, well, he's an up-and-coming player. Yes, he is. Yeah, I mean, it's a look for him to really be one of the guys that could move forward and make a statement as, you know, being somewhere in that top 20, 25 players. It won't take him too long. He's, he's still very young. He's 26. Mm -hmm. up going into the six, which was a little risky, but it turned out perfect. sure he doesn't double hit the cue ball here. Should be able to, he's going to cue, feels like he has to cue so far away from it that he's going to move the cue ball a lot. This is just to avoid the double hit here. Shot. It's going to come off nicely from the rail there. Yeah, he's in line now. Biggest problem in that rack was the six and he managed it well. Strong response from Patsura after a breaking run from Imminent in the first rack. $125,000 is the prize fund here. 37.5 for first place at the Medalla Light Puerto Rico Open. Prize money's almost doubled in the past year in these regular season Predator Pro Series events. You know, not only the prize money, Predator last year um, uh, brought back to life the, the World uh, Eight Ball Championships That's and right. the World Team Championships. Women's World Ten Ball Championships, World, really exactly. doing a lot for the pro game. Women's World Nine Ball Championships as well. And this 10 ball to tie things up. Strong rack from Patsura there. Promises to be a close match, not just by Fargo, but by recent results. Saw both players practicing the shootout shot. Well, at this level, you would think uh, that's probably where it'll end up because it'll be that close. Margaret Fefalova ended up not drawing a seated spot in the women's event, so she'll play Christina Kat to catch tomorrow. Oh, wow. That's quick. That was quick. We have a couple other matches going on. We have Darren Appleton. Versus now Yuki Oi on table number one. Yeah, good to see Darren back in action. It's it really a, is. Yeah, about his fifth major tournament after a bit of a layoff. One of the most successful players in the history of the game. Still out here. Hall of Famer. Yeah. And the other player here in this in this uh, match is the Hall of Famer, the one sitting down right now. That's right. Player of the decade. That's right. 2000 to 2010. Pat Sura coming up dry here. Three is going to be close. Pocket angle on the three is going to be close. So you want to play it in the bottom right, bottom left corner pocket. If he can't, the two's lying decently to open up the 310. Nice position to open it up, as you just said. Yeah. If, 
if he, he feels like he's not going to yeah. open it up, then he still has to get a pretty small angle on the three to move up table towards the four for the long pocket. Tricky layout here. S see what he does. Out for the close foul on the nine. All ball fouls. So he was able to pocket the three. Didn't get the angle he wanted to play onto the four. Will this draw off the ten above yeah, the four? Yeah, big power oh, draw he here. See if he's got enough spin in it. That's a great oh, wow. shot. Just got up, saw the shot quickly, and executed to inch perfect position. What a shot there. Especially new cloth, slippery conditions, and to end up ball in hand position. Yeah, he's one match in, but and you know players are getting used to playing on this predator equipment, so they kind of have that in their memory banks. But still, shots like that are really test of feel, test test of execution, and he's right in line here now for a two-one lead. The young man from Ukraine watching the experience Mika Imonen, 45 year old. Proper angles here, maybe a little straight to get as quite as close as he wants to the 10, but he can ramp up the speed just a bit. Played a nice stun fall there to get closer to it. Yeah, Mika looking smooth and comfortable. Take game number three for a two to one lead. Right from the get go. Couple of the other matches that are going on right now. You got Conrad Yushushin over Jason Cruz, 3 0. Uh, Nayuki Oi leads Darren Appleton, 2 0. Mishko Fortunski leads Hayato Hijikata, 1 0. A couple of the other matches haven't started yet, or no score. Jao Grillo uh, tied up with Daniel Masiol, 1 apiece. Francisco Sanchez leads Ernesto Dominguez 2-0. And Wu Kun Lin leads Luis Jimenez 2-0. Oops, that was a 5-30 match, I'm sorry. That's two sets. Perry Anderson, our referee, making sure everything's tightened up on that arrow rack and those Arco balls. Giving these guys the best rack possible on this Arcadia cloth on this Predator table. Underneath the, uh, the lights. Sticking with the same breaking spot. Got better movement this time, but nothing lining up to the pockets. Patser is going to have an open look here unless the five saves him. Didn't. Cue ball's playing naturally up to the two. So he should be able to stay in line at the tough part of the rack here. Little bit of work to be done on the five. Most obvious pocket for the five is blocked by the six. 
three is close to the four, though, so he'll be able to get the angle he wants on the four. Probably going to look to play the four on the same side as the two. And get a following angle to play the six in the top of the right corner pocket. Pardon me, the five. He left himself a little bit of an angle here. A little more than he would like to have. Yeah, I think he's moving properly towards the proper angle on the four. He's going to have two pockets for the five. Top right corner pocket or right side pocket. Thought he had too much. Yeah, so he no, he didn't. He, that's right. He kind of got not quite enough on the floor. I saw he did a real good job dragging the ball and then actually didn't get down far enough, like you said. Hmm. Still able to play over to the proper side, though. Just going to make the pocketing on the five tougher. Slow draw here. Got a tendency on this shot is to overhit it because you feel like you're trying to get as much draw out of it as possible. But you have, to, you have to give time for the cue ball to react. So kind of a slow draw play while still drawing the cue ball enough. He knows this is a big spot in the first set here. Down 2-1. Big shot right here. Yeah, felt like he couldn't slow draw it enough, so chose, chose to power up a little more. Nicely played. Probably going to come across two rails here just so he can get closer to the seven. Going to afford him angle to get back for the eight as well. position here. <clears throat> a little further than he would have liked, but eight is nice over the corner pocket. Doesn't have to power it all the way back. Kind of just hit it at a comfortable speed back to the middle. Still in decent line. Doesn't want to, wouldn't want to be on the rail, but Eight's nice and close to the pocket where you can feel different parts of the pocket to get back for the nine. Just wrap out of that corner for the middle of the table. Yep. Two rails. Oh, yep. Came up a little short. Two options here. Can power across to the right side rail and play the 10 in the short pocket or cinch the position a little more and play over to the short side. Well done. Just this shot to tie things up. Solid match so far. No real mistakes. Trading punches. Vitali takes rack number four to tie things up. We also have a CSI League event going on here with 650 players in attendance. Playing on the seven foot tables. Beautiful new convention center here. One of the best venues I've ever been at. It's set up very, very nicely, I tell you. So I got to watch it all online last year, and it looked great last year, and it looks a lot better in person. 
And you get to watch it at home for free, and you can come down here and watch it for free down here, too. Enjoy the weather in Puerto Rico, the food. Try some of those Medalla Lights and the uh, rums of Puerto Rico. Right here. Are going with the break from the side rail. Lots of experience in this in these tournaments, so it's the one that he feels works the best for him. That's a new gold rush. Yeah, nice looking cue. The Predator Glove. Good hit there from Patsura. Nine finds its way to the side pocket. Shot on the one as well. Three is going to be very tough. <coughs> Doesn't pass the six, and the combo into the eight is very too tough. Does have the 210, though. He'll be going after the 210 for sure here, just because of where the three is. A little bit tough to manage the cue ball because the one's so close to the rail. Right spin on the cue ball is not going to take as much effect. One's actually missable as well if you start spinning it that much. Yeah, I was just afraid to spin the cue ball so much, so he ended up hitting the two. Three is going to be the ball they're battling on here. Small chance it passes the six, but I feel like not quite enough room there. It's very thin hit to pocket the two. Looks like he's considering it, though. Cue ball is traveling towards the three if he decides to stick with the offense here. Looks like that's what he's going to do. He wants to move the three. If he puts a lot of left English on that cue ball when he cuts the two, it's going to have a chance to hit the three. Yeah, he'll need some left. Yeah, I, th I thought he might. I thought he might go behind the wall. Oh, it leaked out on him. That was tough because he had to cut that that uh, two and control the two ball. Yeah, he was definitely he was definitely considering pocketing it there, but just decided in the end it was too thin, too tough to judge. Mika f Mika has the same option here to try to move into the three. In the background, you saw Garcel Martinez from Peru. Strong result at the International Open last week playing for his country in the team championships. Gonna go at this ball two rails. Ideally trying to hit the top side of it, sending the cue ball towards the four or five. Tough to judge at slow speed there. Was trying to hit it in a way where the cue ball ended up behind the six. Tall order though. And the three is playing a big part in this rack here. Finally moved to a point where it can play a combo on the eight. You know, I just looked up uh, the Peruvian team, Gerson Martinez, Oscar Valdivizio. And Victoria Vasquez. I'm surprised that uh, Gerson didn't bring Christopher uh, Davis with him. Yeah, he did, uh, doesn't play in all the major tournaments, but no. yeah, definitely a strong player from Peru. Sure. Wow, former runner up in the World Handball Championships. Oh. Try another slow kick. Went just all around that ball by an eighth of an inch. And that's going to be his second foul. Mika's definitely going to stick him behind the five here. He's just thinking about where is the best spot for the two ball, where it's going to make it hard to hit. I feel like somewhere near the 10 could work. 
or even up against the seven. Maybe. But he'll have the two rails up on top to come down forward, but still it's gonna be tough. He was awfully close to that ball. Was, I thought he hit it very, very well. Well, here's a smart shot. That it's, he took away the two rails going to the right there. That was the only way I thought he'd have a chance to hit it, and now it's not there. Yeah, that was a smart shot there. Patsura is actually in a very bad spot here. He's going to have to bend the cue ball coming back towards the two. Watch this shot. Watch a left spin. It might go the other way too, but it's tough. Again, right yeah, around it. Missed it by less than an inch three times, and that's the game. Very rare that you see a three foul in the men's pro game, but you could put him in a bad spot three times there. Well, that 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 third uh, that third safety he played, the way he played it up against the five, it just took everything away. Yeah, it was a smart shot. Show, Mika showing his experience there. I've seen him play s several shots like that over the over uh, you know on, the, on this pro billiard series. Good He's looking pretty comfortable today. Yeah, good straight pool player as well. Never really got into one pocket much, but talking tens of thousands of hours of experience sitting in the chair to the right there. Good look at those predator lights, the arena lights, uh, reflecting off the balls. I love that close-up view. Hmm. Yeah. Mika looking over the rack. Switching sides here. See if he goes all the way over to the side rail. Yeah, going to go off the side rail. I like the switch. He was only successful on the first rack. Didn't make a ball in the next two. Tried the cut break there. Again, came up dry. Not going to leave a shot on the one, but going to be in a bad spot on the next shot. Can either play the cue ball behind the seven here or the two. I feel like you can create more separation if you play the cue ball behind the two. Mm, wanted to get closer to the two there. I didn't even get the yeah, hook, you get back. actually. I consider I consider rolling that up behind the seven because you could tuck him in against the rail real nice. Yeah, I mean that it's easier to control thing. the cue ball when you're playing high there. I I just feel like the reason he shot that shot is because he was separation. likely to get more dis distance. Yeah. yeah. And as soon as you said get more separation, so that that makes sense too. Nice shot by Mika. Look at that highlight, real shot. Very nice. This is to win the set too. First good chance for Mika to win the set. Mika's playing really well here. Hasn't made a mistake. Made a couple of really nice shots. Cue ball's tracking a little too far to the right. If the four passes the ten, he'll be okay. But I feel like the, f the ten could be blocking the pocketing angle there. He's up at it quick. It does. Actually drew it a little too much. Still has natural angle coming up towards the five. Overcut it. He's got more draw to the three than he expected there. Left pats are a tough. It's a tempter, obviously a thin shot. Safes aren't easy. If he does play safe, he'll be trying to get the use the eight as a blocker, play the four up the middle. But I think you got to go for this. I think you will just just be of the way the way the table lays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a game shot. winner. It's, it's a game winner, and it it's a thin cut. It's straightforward. Your your cue ball is going to be 
very well controlled. Built in position, yeah. Well, he did back off. Didn't get. Didn't get anywhere. Anywhere near getting it. Cue ball deflected on him more than he thought. There ended up hitting the four too thin. So another big stroke shot from Mika here. I feel like he's going to power up and play the five in the opposite corner pocket. I was able to hold it. Good shot. Great look to win the first set here for Eminem. Mika Power, uh, sponsored by Mez, Taum. Just wanted to stay inside the seven here, did that well. Got a nice angle moving over towards the eight. I feel like just getting close to the eight here is good. A lot of angles that can play you back towards oh. the nine. Did he get too close? Oh, he's perfect. Yeah, he's good. A lot of angles that can get you back towards the nine. Cue ball feel is much stronger when you're closer to it. Got straight, but there was still a way out of it. <laughs> Hard skip the beat on that one. But he played a great first set here and came out with the win. And he does win that four games to two. Second set coming up. Looks like both players are going to stay in the arena for now. Call out some of the names that you'll be hearing uh, starting tomorrow on the World Team Championships. You have Carlo Biado, Roland Garcia, Rubelin Amit, and Cheska Centeno. Listed as number one on the list. And this is number one on the list and <laughs> probably uh, reigning champions. Um, so. On paper favorites. I would. Up for argument. Uh, well, you've also got Great Britain, Darren Appleton, Phil Burford, Kelly Fisher, Allison Fisher. Germany, you have Joshua Filler, Maritz Neuhausen, and Bia Filler. Strong team. They, uh, they had, I think they were semifinalists last year. Mm -hmm. uh, they had, uh, the only difference was uh, Torsten was on their team. Okay. Uh, Spain, Francisco Sanchez, David Alcaide, Maite Ropero. We were actually noting earlier that Maite, um, Forfeited her first match, but had to assume there was some kind of flight issue or something. But More than likely. Yeah. Since she's, she'll be here for the team championships, that'll hopefully. Be contingent on her making it down. <laughs> Canada has a pretty strong team. Alex Pagulayan, John Mora, Brittany Bryant. Definitely. And the USA has Shane Van Bonen, Tyler Steyer, and April Larson. Uh, don't let April Larson fool you. She did a great job last year representing the USA. Yeah, she has a lot of experience. Yeah. And no reason she can't hold that team together. Yeah. And it was uh, Tyler Steyer and Joey Tate. And uh, saw some great matches out of them uh, in, in Klagenfurt last year. Puerto Rico has Ellen Rolón, Alejandro Mercado, and Carmen Maldonado. And... Uh, Chinese Taipei, Chang Zhongling, Kun Lin Wu, and Cho Che Yu. Yeah, dangerous team, no doubt. Let's see who else we got on there that looks pretty, pretty stout. The male players are both strong for Poland. Don't know as much about the female I player for them. Just called her. I just called her match a little while ago. She was playing. Um, oh, can't recall who she was playing. But um, oh, she was playing uh, Skyler Hess. Okay. And uh, they went to they went to a shootout. Um, uh, in that format, um, it's going to be a tough road. Okay. It's going to be a tough road, but the male players are real strong. Uh, maybe she'll get used to the tables, get used to the spotlight, because that seemed to be what bothered her. Mm-hmm.
And of course, <laughs> on anybody's paper list, Alvin Ocean, Mario He, and Jasmine oh, Ocean. Yeah, we forgot about them. Yeah, they're right. At I the didn't top forget. I saved them for the last. Okay, yeah. <laughs> saving the best for last. Saving one of the best for last. Uh, I actually, uh, uh, I kind of like the Philippines and Austria. Like all the teams, but I uh, just. Taipei is going to be tough to beat. And and the, and there is that that, that yeah. those three. Yep. I I can look for those three out of the in the final four. There's 16 teams, so. And you will love the format. The way it sets up is the first set is women's singles. The second set is men's singles. Third set is mixed doubles. The fourth set is singles. The team picks the player. But there's a caveat there. The, the same player that plays the men's singles cannot play the pick the player. And the fifth set is the shootout. So the goal is to get to three sets one. And if it ends yes. up two sets each, it becomes a shootout. Right. Well, the women, the, the women are playing two of the first three matches. So. That's why it's so important. And, 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 and that's the point I made regarding uh, the Polish team. Looks like the players are back in the arena here. Waiting for our referee. I'm sure, he'll be back in a minute. Got a nice full week of pool here for you guys. Five hundred thousand dollars, and as Eric likes to say, up for offer. <laughs> I I caught that from you. One of the, I think it was in. In the Austria, you used that. Yeah. Three hundred thousand for the men's, uh, for the World Team Championships. Hundred twenty-five thousand for the men's championships. Ten ball, which is you're watching now, and seventy-five thousand dollar prize fund for the women's. Difference in prize money for the men's and women's is there's. Uh, 48 women and uh, 128 players for the men's. We fell a little short of that, but that's what it's based on. You know what, pardon me, George. We've been talking about the world teams starting tomorrow. It actually starts Wednesday. Oh, it's, it's tomorrow. I'm losing my time here. Sometimes you forget when you get here. <laughs> you, know, you guys had some rain to deal with yesterday when you got here, right? Yeah, it was almost, almost like flash flooding. It didn't really, it's definitely slowed down the traffic on the way in. I arrived at noon today. Made it nice. Well, Patsuda makes one on the break. Yeah, ball, ball behind the one went directly in the side, which is rare for from the breaking side. from the side rail. Yeah. Good start, though, for him. Good look at the one. Most obvious pocket for the four is blocked by the eight, but the three is playing decently into getting underneath it. Going to have to maneuver between the six ten to get properly on the three. Good shot there. Played it in that way so we can play the cue ball back in between the 6-3. Down to the short rail. Some right spin. Trying to spin it to the right of the 6. Might be a little too thin. But if he has that angle, that's definitely what he'll be playing. Could play to just play into the 6 off the short rail as well. It's going corner. Going to be tougher to get on the 3 this way. 
Get jammed up here. Well, in losing the first set, Batsuda had one dry break, while Mika had three dry breaks. Interesting. Mika had that break and run to begin with, and that was really any time. Wasn't many missed balls. Mika missed no. the four. Wasn't many overall, though. No, Patsuda came back and ran uh, ran um, Mika's dry break in the second rack. And then it, like you said, I think Patsuda missed one ball, too. Close match so far. Patsura seems confident with kicking the ball slow. I mean, it didn't work out for him in the rack that he got three fouled, but even that rack there you can tell that he's really no matter where the shots are he's always has a kick safe in mind kind of at the slower speed he's got him good again here too close to the eight to jump might Me be possible but very tough to pull off in a one-off situation Go two rails at three here. Mika's safeties have been very, very strong. He got that one three foul game, and they've all been right along this. Yeah, I mean, this is like his fifth ball in hand, maybe. Yes. It's very tough against a world class player. And pretty much break and dry, this is how he made it up. ball down near the eight. Played it decently as long as it doesn't get behind the eight. It's a good shot there. A little straight, but he can use some right spin to stay on the left side of the table. Good shot. Staying in line nicely here. Going to look to get straight on the eight and drop the same side of the table for the nine. Little in between, but he can play it over to the opposite side. I think he'll play a short side on the nine. Yep, I like the short side here. Just lays natural. Yep. Chose to power up and try to get back to the long side, but it made him miss the ball. Speed made him miss the ball there. I mean, he knows. He, it, it's kind of one of those spots where you're in between shots too, right? He, uh, he had the shot that we called in mind as well. Kind of plays tricks with your mind. I mean, uh, you know, he's a good enough player that he decided on the shot before a good amount of time before he hit it, but... Mine can kind of double cross you in those spots sometimes. Shot there from Petsura, controlling the rail first shot nicely. Oh, he got straight. Yeah. Can he? He can. He <laughs> can fo go forward here, can he? Yeah, he's got enough yeah, angle got to make something to go happen. Forward. Yeah. Opportunity miss from Imminent in there. If there's any knock on Imminent, it's that he's a little bit emotional, so we'll see how he recovers from this. I think he knows that in his personality, though. Been a champion for a long time. 
easily capable of recovering. Second game of the set. Breaking from the side. Went for the cut break there. Jam the two in the side. One in the corner. And no shot in the three. afraid to play kick safes, but I feel like he'll be able to create distance here. It's too aggressive to try and kick safe. He's actually looking at it. Well, the nine ball seems to have a hand in that play. He'll be trying to kick it up table then in order to get it across so he can stay behind the 6-5. Well, this is an aggressive yeah. push here. He's going to kind oh. of, oh, he might push into the window. I thought he was going to push into a kick, but it looks like he's more going to push into the window between the 5-6. I don't think he's going to like this. I think Mika takes this. I think he goes off the right side of it and goes two rails behind the 4-7. No, it just stayed right there behind the ten. Yeah, less movement. Nice and cute ball. Tidy. shot clock here so it's an extension gonna try to hit the bottom side of the oh, he's jumping at it tried to make it that's an aggressive play there created some distance though Mika's got a decent wall with the 5-6-8 here. Could choose to be aggressive. It's a bit of a two-way if he does play aggressive because the 5-6-8 can still get in the way if he misses the three. been playing I wouldn't be surprised to see him take it on oh that's a tricky roll there cue ball could have got behind the five kind of down to the end of his shot clock Wasn't quite ready to execute it how he wanted but still could have turned out a lot better for him the way he hit it mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward here. Got on the wrong side of the four, though. I thought he would just ease it down instead of with the spin. Yeah, he was tracking across the angle yeah. a little bit. He didn't, yeah. he, typically, you'd want to go two rails there, but the nine was kind of in the way of the two rail play. 
worst thing about this is not only the cue ball is going the wrong way, the cue ball is running into the seven off the second rail, so he's going to have to come up with something here. Yeah, he's not going to go for it. It's too much of a positional trap. Good recognition, but he left it open. Tough spot for Imminent. He can use the 5 6 again. He's going to get aggressive. He's called the 7. Great shot. How's the 4 going to end up? Right in the side pocket. Just made it there. Good shot from Imminent. Shots like that are why he was player of the decade. Yeah, when he was playing his best, and I'm not, not saying he's not still, but he was a very aggressive player. Just liked keeping control of the table, was able to make those high-level shots. Still can and has made some great ones in this match. Always tough when you're playing an object ball really far away from a pocket there. Feel like the five doesn't pass the six in the corner, but it's available to the side. You'd want if the cue ball runs directly into the eight, that'd be a good shot. I think it lays real nice for that. Just gotta make sure you're hitting the middle of the eight, not either side of it. Looks like he's going off the left side. Oh, he went Chose around. to draw around it. Didn't take any chances. Some guys just hate to bump into balls. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, you're, you're considering pocketing the ball, and if you if you hit the ball into a different part of the pocket, you're going to hit a different part of the ball you're running into. It's a complex shot. A little straight here. He's going to want to be able to cheat the pocket to the left. Looks like he's actually on the wrong side of it, so he's going to take the longer shot on the nine. Just to take a decent lead in the second set here. Only coming up and down two rails here. Always take note when these when these players have tougher pocketing angles, they, they always favor the medium speed over the rolling speed. He can actually get where he wants by just slow rolling it, but he's going to be more aggressive. It's easier to hit the targeting point when you're more aggressive at the pocketing angle. Good shot there. I like this a lot a lot better, bringing that, that second rail into play. It's the right always. shot. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's easier to hit your contact point when you get up around medium speed rather than just lagging speed. Couple mistakes in that rack, but Patsura comes out with the win. Neither player has been really offensive off the break. Both making a ball under 50% of the time. Starts there. Patsura has broke from the same spot each each rack so far. Referee Perry Anderson racking the balls there at the Medalla Light Puerto Rico 10 ball open in San Juan, Puerto Rico. All these pro billiard series lead up to the world, Predator World 10 ball, sanctioned by the WPA in Vegas, along with the Q Sports International's Expo. 
Yeah, we'll be looking forward to that tournament. And any players looking for an alternative to Vegas, you can consider Puerto Rico. It's a nice time out here. It really Very is. nice venue. Yeah. It's only going to get bigger. Chance to watch the pros as well. Great accommodations. Yeah. And the weather is <laughs> perfect. Summertime weather. hit lots of action on the balls six balls below the head string nothing down though Eminem's gonna have to push here jumps too tough always tougher to push in 10 ball because there's more <laughs> balls on the table so there's more <laughs> balls to play safe around All right I like this one though Make the tally, move the cue ball far to the high beat, possibly behind the three. But since he's moving the cue ball so far, it's always a chance for it to go wrong for him. Watch out for the 10 here. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's going to go at it because he can play the one in a safe position. I was looking at that, and I just wondered if if, if that wouldn't be a bad shot to play. He can't, hold, he can't control the one to stay behind a safe area. Yeah, I mean, the 10's a little far from the pocket where I'd consider pretty he low percentage, but it. he is going at it. What a shot this would be. All feel here. Just feel the natural track of the cue ball. You know the one's going safe. Definitely an element to it. Got to get the speed right to get the one safe, but he's going to have a go at it. Danger here is if you hang the 10, the one's still safe, so he should be okay. Ended up backing off in the end. He kind of showed it him in the shot. Not that he wouldn't have seen it, but. <laughs> well, I have a feeling that Mika might have even possibly considered the shot. That's thus he pushed there. But I don't know if he'll, he's pretty aggressive, but is he that aggressive? Went at it. Yes, went he it. is. Went at it with speed too. <laughs> And I'm surprised he went at it with speed, but I guess he just felt he could judge it better that way. That and the fact that he didn't want to hang it up. Right. Yeah. Left pets are safe, though. He, he can play the one off the two. Tough to judge those shots, but I feel like he might try that here. Two ball is going to be loose. Safes are tough. Took his extension. Looks like he is calling the one, though. Two ways. Nice cue ball. Yeah. Look, look what he's done. That 110. If you get ball in hand, sits nice. But he's got a fairly simple. You might want to call. They call that simple or just good percentage. Well, the the left oh, side rail is taken out of. Yeah, the eight's blocking left side rail. Oh, and there's your. Uh, just missed it. There's the shot. Oh. Ref's got to let the cue ball stop rolling there, but I don't think it would have affected the two very much. I thought Mika was going to hand him the cue ball when he first went by. Yeah, it. Mika knew that. Ref just forgot to let it stop rolling, but not going to affect anything here because he's going after the 110. Be a quick game and a quick way to get on the hill. Good shot. And we have 
a 3-0 score with Vitali Patsuda. One game away from sending this to a shootout. I understand what you're saying about, you know, when Mika was going at the 10, he could have hung it up if he hit it at a slower mm -hmm. speed. But I think the overall percentage was still to just hit it at a slower speed and leave the one safe there. It makes the pocket bigger. Yeah, yeah, and it's Plus just the cue ball's going to stay there kind of close with it. The Where he was going to leave the one, he was very unlikely to get the cue ball back into the 10 anyways, and that would have been if it hung up right over the pocket. So I'm really surprised he just went at it there. Ended up hurting him in that rack. Well, it was a big shot, and uh, he felt it was the right thing to do. Had he been successful? Definitely. Of course, hindsight's always 20, yeah. 20 no doubt about Unsuccessful. that. He might question that shot later. But again, nothing down. Nice open rack here for Eminem. Just has to stay on the right side of all the angles. Bit of work to do from the one to the two. Gonna have to get back in a position where he can pocket it inside. Vitality coming on strong here this rack, this uh, set, excuse me. He's had uh, about 62% of the time at the at the table compared to uh, Mika's 38, and leads 3-0. Yeah, a couple times he overran the speed off the short rail there. Cue ball a lot more than he wanted here. Got back in line well, though. In perfect line now. Maintain angle on the six, come across the table. Hasn't really been able to get anything going off the break, but he'll be trying his best in the next rack. Opening up his account in the second set here. And in these short races, it's never too late to open up an account. Sure. Once you get one on the board, get, that, get the ball rolling, get near the finish line real quick. After losing the first three games of the set, Mika Eminen, as you said, opens up his account. He's gone from the right, right side of the table with a closed bridge and then moved over to the left side, from the side rail. See what he chooses to do here. Well, the Medalla Light Puerto Rico Ten Ball Open is also part of the Caribbean Championships. 650 local amateur players, players from all around the world, actually, about 30% of them local. Mm -hmm. Yeah, open to anybody. Open to anybody with qualified BCA weeks. And as you said, you said earlier in the match, uh, this would be a good alternative to Vegas if you had to pick one or the other. Definitely. Um, or both, if you. Yeah, or both. Yeah. yeah, they're both worth it.
flying in. It was just beautiful view from the plane, flying into Puerto Rico. Yeah, it's only about a two and a half hour flight from the continental east coast. Not more than five from anywhere in the U.S. Dry break again from Eminem. Little puzzle on the break here. Good shot, good opening shot there from Patsura. Going to have to play a power draw back towards the four. Probably moving the cue well between the five, seven. But he's on good angle to get the angle on the three. He needs to do that. Little straight, so he's gonna have to hit a little more speed than he want than he wanted. But still making his way through the early part of the rack well here. Nice shot there. Well, I would say from here he's in total control to send this to a shootout. Yeah, if the five passes the ten, it's going to help him a lot. If not, he's going to have to just move the cue ball a little bit more and play the five on the side. Nice natural shot to come down for the six from the five, get up for the seven. Gave himself a good angle to come up for the seven. Yeah, he'll definitely be playing the side on the seven, which will allow him to get a good position on the eight because the pocketing on the seven will be 100%. Can focus all on the position here for the eight. Gonna have to move the cue ball a little more than he wanted. I think all six pockets are available for the eight. I was concerned about the ten ball because this lays nice for a two rail position for the eight ball in the in that corner. He held it up. Yeah, a little too much angle. I have to take a little more distance on the nine, but the nine's close enough to the pocket that I still expect him to get out here. And again, so you'll see him play this two rail option. Could be up and down the center twice. Think I'd favor that. You can hit it a little more aggressively, but no way he'll be rolling this in one rail. Only reason he might is because you have to spin the cue ball a fair bit either way to go the two rails, but I think he'll still play two rails here. He's having to think about it. It's kind of in between three shots, he, he, really. He left himself a tough shot, I think. I mean, for the... Um, it's the inside English or drawing it two rails. Yeah, I mean he he wants to play um, he wants to play it more aggressively, but you have to spin the ball a decent amount or, or judge the draw if you do that. Jeez, the spin yeah. made a miss at that yep. speed. Yeah, I was leaning towards the inside English with just medium speed. Which he played, actually. And and the, the inside made him overcut the ball. Yeah, I can see him kind of bugging out there. It's just surprised him on, what he, well, on the mistake he made. This could be deadly for him. 
a good break. Mika has yet to really make a ball in the break other than the opening break uh, of the first set. And uh, he's got to find it sooner or later. Well, mi misses like that really energize the opponent too, right? You know, you kind of feel like you're free rolling now, right? So it's... Exactly. Yeah. That's the other piece of that puzzle. It's a second round winner's match. Be playing down to the final 32. At that point, there'll be a redraw. Women will be playing down to the final 16, and then a redraw. We also have the World Team Championships coming up tomorrow, starting tomorrow. Looked like a round robin format to me, George. Do you remember from last year? It's a round um, robin into a redraw. Is that correct? I don't recall that. I thought it was a straight um, double knockout. Double knockout. I'll have to take a look at the draw again, but it seemed like they had three matches listed for each team. Went back to his original breaking spot. Dry again, though. Left the shot on the one. Cue ball's tracking towards the six, but he might be able to draw it enough where he can get inside the six. Yeah, M Mika's just been puzzled on the break this set. Showing a little motion there about it. You might be right. Looks like uh, it's round one, round two, and round three, and then the quarterfinals, semifinals, and the final. Yeah, so you're probably getting the best eight records out of the three rounds are going to advance into the quarterfinals, so half the teams will be eliminated after the three matches. Playing into a combo here, and this is for the this is for the second set. It's off angle and far from the pocket, so high level of difficulty here. But he's he's got to go for it. I like hitting this combo around medium speed. Definitely not babying it, but not over hitting it. Kind of stay away from spinning the ball. Maybe slight bit of left. Judging how the two plays into the 10. Has to be perfectly played into the 10 here. He's putting all his marbles into one bag because it's going to be tough to get a safety out of this. Yeah. He misses it. Over hit the speed. Watch out for the cue ball here. Missed the cue ball as well. Oh, look what he's done here. Four tens kind of lining up for a combo, so we're headed towards Hill Hill here. He might have the 210. Sure, if he does, he'll take it right away. Yeah. It's tight. He's going to back off and mind. play the, the carom option. Carom or a combo, depending on how he gets on the three. He'd favor the combo in this situation, but could be spot angles on the three that he'll end up playing the carom. It's almost a stop shot. He's going to come towards the ball just a little. Well, he's playing the combo. Yeah, it's kind of in between. Cue ball lied well to get the combo. So all of a sudden, we're hill hill here. Imminent breaking, which has been a disadvantage for him the whole set, but he'll be happy to be in this set. Patsura had it one shot at it there and definitely had it one on the nine. Well, disadvantage or not, you want to have the break. Yeah, I would, I don't know. if he's if he had the choice here, he'd be taking the break.
Last rack of the set. Does it go to a shootout? Or does Mika win it? Two sets to nil. Vitaly doesn't look too faced. Just hoping for his next chance. It's all he can do, you know. Keep your composure, even if you're making a couple mistakes. Got to be ready for the next chance. Still breaking from the side. Nine ball. Push the nine directly in the corner. Open shot on the one. Everything's open. Yeah, finally got his chance off the break. See if he can take advantage here. Well, he was due. Definitely. I will say his breaks sound different than a lot of the others. Yeah, he's not popping them. He's hitting them flat. Um, you know, this. the more successful breakers in this format are the players that have really been smashing the rack. Staying in good line here. A few options from the four to the five. I think he'll just try to get close to it and adapt to whatever angle he ends up getting. He, he didn't get the angle. Yeah, if he, 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 want, he needs angle going to the right here. He has a little bit, but he's really got a power out of it. Uh oh. Yeah, it was so straight that he had to draw right out of it and it kind of delayed Drew on him. It was so tough to judge the amount of how the ball is going to draw off the object ball when you're elevated like that. If you watch how the cue ball moved here, it kind of went forward first and then Drew. He wanted to draw it straight back off the four. Oh, headed towards a shootout here. Been an exciting match so far. Counting on an exciting shootout. Yeah. I'd like to have the cue ball right where it's at now. Not sure he wants it there. Oh, I he might have to throw it in. That's he'll be tight. able. To, yeah, he'll be able to if if he needs to load it up with slow left here. I think he has enough of it. Ideally, he doesn't have to even spin it. But yeah, he just, he's just oh, there. Oh, he's just barely there. Yeah. Got a little straight again. Just won't be able to get as close to the ten as he would have liked, but. Still great chance here to win the second set. Does he have the opening in the side pocket to be able to bring that cue level of that a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, he's just going to elevate so he can hit it a little more aggressively. Good shot. And there you have it. Vitali Patsuda sends this match into a shootout. The shootout. The cue ball will be spotted behind the head string, one diamond away from the side rail. And they will alternate pockets. First, it's four innings. The leader after four innings is the winner. If they are tied at four innings, the cue ball is backed up, one diamond from the head string and one diamond away from the side rail. And again, until one misses, it'll be sudden death.
Mika won the lag, so he has the option to shoot first and pick sides. He's picking the left side first. As we look at as we view the table at home. It's the most ultimate test of pocketing you'll ever have in a pool tournament here. Start for Eminem. If the players are successful back and forth, they just it continues until someone misses and becomes sudden death. I think the longest shootouts have been around 14 shots. That was between Naoyuki Oi and Jesus Atencio way back in Arizona. Very impressive considering they have to move the cue ball back after four shots. Big pressure too, you know. It's Saw Yap take it into double digits once. Mm -hmm. Went in the side of the pocket there, but still counts. Well, that's the first inning. Inning number two. Mika will break from the left side this time towards the right pocket. On your screen. They are on the time clock for this uh, shootout also. No extensions, I'm assuming. Yeah, no extensions. 30, 30 seconds. Um, Just barely missed it. But a miss nonetheless. Yep. Advantage Patsura now. Early miss by his opponent. He can take advantage. If he pockets this, the pressure is fully on Mika. Got it. Side pocket. Not hard enough. Yeah, playing it aggressively where he actually has a chance to scratch around three yeah. rails in the yeah. side. I, I, I actually love playing it. And I, uh, when people have asked me what we feel or what I feel is one of the best ways to play it in discussions with other people, uh, that that's what I find the best. Highest percentage um, on how you roll it. Everything about the shot is just the only thing you can do wrong is to overstroke it and scratch in the side pocket. Yeah, playing it at a speed where it comes off the third rail. Yep, just playing it to hit the third rail. Kind of like he did right there, just playing it to hit the third rail. Okay. It's two to two right now on the shootouts. But this is the bottom of the third inning. Yeah, Pat Sir has a shot in hand here. Big shot here. He can really put pressure on, on Mika right here. He does. Right in the heart. He does. This is a must make for Mika. If he misses this, Patsura won't even have to shoot. Yeah. Tough spot to be in. Fourth inning. You gotta cover your bases just by making it. That's it. Mika Eminen goes down by missing the two shootouts out of the four innings. And Patsura pockets three in a row. One to the one lost side. And Patsura will move on to round two winners. 
This is George Teachea and Eric Hoffelson bringing you the live action here in San Juan, Puerto Rico. We'll be with you guys all week, and we'll see you tomorrow.